Welcome to Steelers Weekly. I'm your host, Brian Schmidt, and with me, as always, former Pittsburgh Steeler wide receiver Dwight Stone. Dwight, how you doing? Hey, I'm feeling good. Big win, getting ready for Turkey Day. You, you, you've been picking at the turkey already, haven't you? I, I, what gave it away? <laughs> I, you know, I'm pretty sure every time you go by the kitchen, you know, it, <laughs> by tomorrow half the bird's going to be gone. <laughs> Yeah, I know how that is. Uh, you know, but yeah, you know, hey, got a win. Uh, you know, coming off that four-game loser streak, uh, 24-9 win. And, 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 and listen, let's, let's talk about this a little bit. Uh, a lot of people have have said it. Uh, a win and a disappointing win. Uh you know, how, what's your take on that? Uh, you know, at this point, I mean, is, you know, is it, is it a disappointing win? It, do, you, do you look at this as, hey, you know, disappointing, yes, but it, but it's a win and, and you move on? I mean, how how do you approach this? Uh, I approach it, and I wonder if the Steelers get better playing the Browns or if they played another team, would they have how they would have seen? You know, they played the Browns. Uh, probably right now some college teams can beat the Browns, but – you think that they improve by playing the Browns? Did it show that they improve in certain areas? Or they pretty much stayed the same or they got worse? It's hard to tell when you're playing the Browns, you know. If you win, like you said, a win is a win. But playing the Browns does not give you some kind of, you know, scale on like, okay, we're doing a lot better or we're not doing so good. So, yeah, I mean, it, it was interesting. Uh, uh, I know from, from my standpoint, uh, I was disappointed in – in the overall play again. Uh, however, you know, uh, you know, Bell had a huge day, 28 carries, 146 yeah. yards, a touchdown, had eight pass receptions. Uh, yes, he's a beast. Fed him the football and let him do his thing offensively. Uh, you know, Ben Ben did not, uh, you know, an interesting stat line in that Ben was 23 of 36, but only for 167 yards. Wow. Uh, you know, very interesting stat line when you, when you look at stuff like that. Um, uh, you know, I, I, a, a very interesting, strange, uh, surreal. I, I don't know what, what to call it. Just, just, a, just one of those games to watch that just uh, uh, did not, did not give you a warm, fuzzy feeling at the end of it. But at the same time, as I as I transitioned into Monday and. You know, thought about it uh, a little bit more. You know, at this point, after a four-game losing slip streak, you just got to be happy to get a win. <laughs> the truth, <laughs> isn't that the yeah. truth? Uh, defensively, uh, you know, again, you're you're playing a Browns offense that is not very good, but again, defensively, even at times. Uh, you know, especially, you know, with, with McCown in there in the second half, uh, you know, they moved the football at times. Uh, they did some things. I, I, you know, I think McCown, was, was, he was 14-27, to 27, 118 yards, one touchdown in his time in the game. Um, you know, certainly moved the ball, did some things. Uh, you know, they can't run the ball, and that's been a Browns problem all year, yeah. and fortunately for us. Um, but, I, and I didn't get a warm, fuzzy feeling with the defense either. <laughs> so, you, so you weren't too happy throughout the game. You just weren't quite sure how it was going to end. Yeah, you know, you know, it got the 17 and it, that that moment of at 17 to nine where you start going, uh, uh oh, um, and, and that really is what it was. I, I mean, it got the 17 nine, and you just mm-hmm. start going, okay. This this has the ingredients to 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 go badly. Uh, you know, fortunately, you know, the fumble recovery in the end zone and that, that kind of put it you know, that was huge. But uh I, I think people and, and we talked about this last week, you know, anybody that thinks that the Browns were just gonna roll over and this was gonna be a blowout, uh certainly we didn't get that, but at the same time you get Especially in the second half, you never got a feeling that the game was in control either. At least I did. I don't know. What was your take? How did you feel about it? Yeah, like you said, you know, it never was where you got to the comfortable where you said, oh, man, they're they about to 
step away with this. They're about to run away with this game. But because the Browns just kept hanging around, like you say, it was 9 and nine to 17, he's like, you got to be kidding me. They can get a touchdown and a two-point conversion, and they're, they're back in this game. You know, they're back. They weren't really out of the game, but they were close enough, you know, to make it a real hard game. But like you said, you know, the Browns do what the Browns do. They're, they're finding a way to give you a win. And sure enough, with that sack, fumble, touchdown by the Steelers, and I think the defense helped them out with that right there because I don't think the defense – the offense started sputtering a little bit to me. It seemed like they didn't – like you say, the only one was going good. <clears throat> it was uh, – Ben wasn't Ben. I guess they, they didn't need Ben to be Ben. You got a running back that can carry the load for you. You, you try to ride him as much as possible, and – and they did a good job with that. And, and I thought that was that was key. I, I thought they did a great job of, you know, you know, riding Bell. This, this is something that, that I, I've talked about, you know, on the show a few times, and, and we've talked about it a few times, and I've talked about it on other shows. Uh, you, you know, that man, you got to put the ball in his hands. Yes. Uh, I think I think at times you look at the stat line, you look at the rushes, you look at the catches. Uh, I, I thought the stat line in this game was very appropriate in terms of the amount of carries he got, the amount of catches he got. I think you've got, got to feed him the football. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, he, he's got to be that integral part of this game. Uh, so, you know, we come out of this thing and, uh, you, know, you know, let's be honest right now. Fortunately for us, uh, the AFC North is not exactly the power of uh, division everybody thought it was going to be. Uh, Baltimore is at five and five. Steelers at five and five. Uh, Baltimore has that half game lead based on the win. Uh, Cincinnati right now is up against the ropes, getting Mike Tyson shots to the head. Uh, they're three six and one and getting, you know, getting getting beat up right now. Uh, you know that's a that's a team that you know when when everybody talks about the AFC North in, in the beginning. Yes, uh, it was Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, and, mm-hmm. and 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 then you know Baltimore, you know maybe you know another possible wild card team. Right now, uh, the AFC North, and you know, is maybe going to be a one team uh, right. playoff uh, deal. I mean, you know, you certainly don't see two. You know, right now, you don't see two teams coming out of this division. Um, I don't. So very fortunate for for Pittsburgh right now to be five and five, and, and also have Baltimore at five and five. And as I said, Cincinnati right now is, you know, they are they are they are in trouble. Uh, yeah, but but when you look at the division right now, uh, you know, where do you see Baltimore uh, finishing up? Uh, where do you see them as a, you know, as a as a uh, you know, a possible team to, to, to win this, uh, you know, compare them with Pittsburgh and in, in, in where this can end up. I think uh, Baltimore is a, right now the team that, after losing his Dallas, they're kind of trying to feel like, okay, where are we now? We're 5-5, we're five and five, the Steelers 5-5, five and five, but we beat them one time. So they got one – they think that they have that half a game lead on them by beating them. Uh, looking at them, it looked like they they was in the game with Dallas until Dallas just for some reason found another gear, and they they stepped away with the game. Not really stepped away with it, but by looking at them, it's like they have a. Uh, I, if you look out, it's it's kind of like the Steelers. It's like one minute you get a team that you like, wow, look at look at the Raven. Then next minute you're going like, where did this team come from? So I think, like you say, it's time for one team to start separating from the other. Uh, the Steelers. Uh, play the Browns. Uh, they get a break coming up because Andrew Luck is not playing. How about that? You 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 happen yeah, that's, to win that's the game. That's a huge break. <laughs> that, that right? I mean, Andrew Luck is like one of the top five quarterbacks, I think, in the league. You know, for his, his you know, distributing the ball, understanding of the game, you know, moving it around, and you fall into the luck of this. But you got to realize they don't have too much game tape on this young man who they can ready to play. He from he came from the Packers. And the thing with that is, to make a long story short, is you don't have film on, so you know what to expect. But he's 0-1-1. He had, what, five interceptions and one touchdown. Last pass he thrown was 2014. Now, 
the Steelers can really put that kind of Steeler blitz on him, I think this is the time they can go back to that. It's the time is now, you know, because this young man can have his head all over the place because uh, you start sending defensive backs and linebackers and they drop him back linemen. I think the Steelers can start getting on a little roll right here and taking this game, real setting up for the Giants game because the Giants are hot right now. Yeah, I mean, right now, uh, you, know, you look at Baltimore's schedule, they got, they got Cincinnati this week, uh, they got Miami, then they go to New England, then they've got Philadelphia coming in. Philadelphia is a very strange team. Uh, they, can, they can, you know, again, what you typically get with a young team, Yes, they look like world beaters one week, and then, and then they, they look like... Uh, you know, me me on the dance floor the next, uh, not very good. So you get a little bit of everything, and then they, oh. then they finish up with Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. Uh, so, you know, certainly, uh, you know, New England, that's not one that you would think Baltimore's going to win. Philadelphia is a toss. Miami's playing, excuse me, Miami's playing better football right now. I know. Uh, that's not a, you know, that that's not a gimme. Uh yeah, you know, Cincinnati. You know, unfortunately, you're playing a Cincinnati team that you know is struggling. So, you know, right now, I mean, you know, the back end shapes up to make that Baltimore Pittsburgh game, you know, definitely right. for the division title. So, uh, a lot of things with that. So this week, Indianapolis, and as you touched on, no, uh, no luck. Uh, which, believe me, uh, that's had me a little nervous all, you know, all the way through because. You know, and let's be honest, the Colts are not a great football team right now. But the no. thing is, with teams like uh, the Colts, and, 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 you know, again, they're 5-5 five and five just like we are. But the thing with a team like the Colts is when you have such a good quarterback, and, and Andy yeah. Luck is certainly – those are, those are the teams that any given week can beat anybody in the league – uh, but also because of their deficiencies defensively uh, and, and offensive line. I mean, Luck just gets beat up. You know, they're a team that, that can struggle. Well, now you, you, you take away Andrew Luck. That that certainly should open the door for this to be a, a victory. Uh, however, when you're not world beaters either right now, uh, you, you know, this is the kind of game that – you know, as a fan, makes me nervous. As a coach, mm-hmm. makes me really nervous. Yes, because these are the games that if you if you walk into this thing, you dominate, and you win. Everybody says you should have. Everybody's exactly. feeling good, but you got to remember you didn't play against Andrew Luck. There you if go. you go and you lose this game, everybody's <laughs> looking at you going, "How did you lose this game? <laughs> you don't win, no matter exactly. what you do." Uh, to the bottom line, if you get the W, uh, you know, but, but certainly uh, this is a very winnable game. I, I mean, I would, you know, I, I would feel like as a, you know, as a Steeler team, you know, this is when you got to start building uh, where you want to be at the end of the season, I would think. Yes. Yes, you do. I mean, like you say, no luck is for them. Good luck is for us because good that luck is not playing. And, like, if you're going to start building momentum, you know, going into the second half, because, it's, like you said, the next to the last game playing the Ravens may be the game to decide who's going to the playoffs. Because, like you say, ain't nobody doing no world beaters on, over here. There's only one team from this division will go to the playoffs. And if they don't step up right now, they can't do one of the Miami things, you know, well, we're just going to show up. Because this young man realized, too, his opportunity to take a, get a start it's good for him. You know, he's playing the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's playing on Thanksgiving Day. You know, this guy may go crazy. You know, he may do things that no one ever knew he could do. So I think that's scary in a sense. You know, it's good we don't have luck, play against luck. But at the same time, this young man, like you said, like the Miami game, you can't you can't go to sleep on him. No, you can't. And, and uh, you know, certainly uh, – this is one that you have to get. You have to have this. Uh, you know, this. You can't let this opportunity slide. Not happen to play against Andrew Luck. Uh, when you look at the Steelers right now, and you, you look at, you know, I was looking at some of the stat line. I mean, Ben. You know, Ben has had a, had a, had a decent year. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, maybe not what 
was expected so far, but but certainly uh, Ben, you know, you know, here's you know Bell with you know 128 carries on 579 yards so far this year. Yeah. Uh, but but here's the stat that that just blows my mind. Uh, Bell has 53 catches on the year already. What? He missed how many five, games? 53 catches for 415 yards. So you're talking about a running back who has 128 carries and 53 catches, and so we talk about feeding him the football. Uh, really, up until last week, he's been he's been fed the ball, you know, quite a bit in the passing game. And last week he was too, but I mean they they really gave yeah. him carries last week, but. You know, but it kind of comes back to what I said earlier. I, I really believe you got to feed you got to feed him the ball. Yes. I know there's concern about the knees and, and keeping him fresh, and, and I get that. But if we were sitting here at eight and two, I'd say <laughs> absolutely. Say, yeah. You know, but but right now we're five and five fighting for a playoff. Uh, you got you got to you got to bring all the horses to the stable and give them the kibble and go. And right now. <laughs> You know, Bell, you, you 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 can't you can't save him. You you got to, you know, I believe you got to get the ball in his hand. Mm, you you're right. I mean, you got to get the ball in his hand. It's another guy too, Brown. You know, the the bees. You know, get them two involved. You know, like I said, and he missed how many games in the beginning of the season? Oh, he missed like one or two games in the beginning of the season. And yeah. Bell has got them kind of staff. That's that's amazing. That's amazing that he had, and he he missed two games, so he should have a little freshness to him. A little, you know, he, he missed two games, so he's not really beat up like he would have been if he had played the first two games. So he, he's still two games behind on everybody else. Right. Uh, defensively, let, let's talk about defense a little bit, and and this is uh, never one of my favorite <laughs> subjects sometimes, uh, but you know, right now. Uh, Defensive line is eh, linebacker is pretty good. The back end of the defense right now is, you know, at times struggles. Um, is there anything that can be done with you know, especially six games left? Uh, is there anything that can be done to fix this, or is it pretty much right now you try to do the best you can, you try to put guys in the right spot best you can, and just hope it works. You just, you just said it. you got to put guys in the best position, and you pray for the, the uh, things to happen the right way. Because you look at that uh, the front front lineman, defensive lineman, and the uh, the, the uh, defensive back. You know the linebacker core is doing a good job. But, you know the, the main thing if you got the big hogs in the front making things happen, putting pressure on there, occupying two people, and, and making quarterback feel like we got to throw the ball hot real fast. They're sitting back there, you know, having dinner and, and picking people apart. You got a problem. And defensive back are still young, and they can turn around left and right. And they're getting ready to play some guy named T.Y. Hilton, who ain't no joke. I'm telling you that this young man right here is going to make some things happen, and we don't want to get him started, you know. So we got to deal with what we got and pray for the best. You know, if we got to get uh, – we got, and that's where the offense come in. You know, if they, they put in 28, we got to put up 30. They put up 30, we got to put up – at least one point more to win. So whatever that their offense does, our offense got to make sure we have more points because I think the defense right now are being wore down. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, you know, when you look at the stats, I mean, the Steelers for the year only have five interceptions in the RD Wow. Uh, and, and here's an interesting stat, and as I'm, as I'm looking at this, um, I, I looked at this earlier, and I, I literally had to bring it back up because I just had to make sure that I was right. <laughs> of the five interceptions the Steelers have on the year, the Steelers' defense has yeah. five interceptions on the year. Of the five, Artie Burns, rookie corner, has two of them. If I were to tell you exactly. that the other three interceptions that the Steelers have, none of them are by defensive backs. Really? How shocking is that? Oh, my. Artie Burns has two interceptions, Jarvis Jones, linebacker one, linebacker, yeah. Ryan Shazier, linebacker one, James Harrison, the other one. That's so a- if wow. that tells you 
where the issues are in the back end. I mean, again, uh, we can sit here and look and, and, and we talk about the, the back end issues and everything, but sometimes when you look at the stats, it, it really screams out just uh, how bad the back end has been. Uh, when, when you've got one DB with two interceptions, you don't have another DB with an interception. All your other interceptions are coming from your linebackers. Uh, that tells the story. That does. I mean, they're ranked 26 on defense and passing, 268 yards a game people are doing on them. They're ranked ninth in rushing, so they're 22nd overall on defense. But they're 26 in passing. So what do you think they're going to do with the uh, – they everybody going to start passing? Yeah, I mean, wow. you, you really have to you – know, when you look at it, I mean, you really, if you're, if you're a Steeler team, if you're, if you're playing the Steelers, I mean, you've got to look at mm-hmm. – you know, but the like, thing is, and this is the other thing, is uh, it's not exactly the teams have not won the ball against us. Uh, I mean, New England ran the ball against us, uh, you know, Dallas ran the ball, you know, effectively. It wasn't, you know, as big a total as you got out of New England, Miami, but they ran the ball effectively. But when you're able to run the ball just enough, it sets up the pass and allows yes. you to run the football. Mm-hmm. And we're seeing that. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of interesting uh, tidbits when you come in and look at this week uh, – you know, I, I kind of took some time and thought, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit back here and I'm gonna I'm gonna certainly look at some stats and and, and I, I really want to try to try to do something. So as I'm looking, I, I really uh, the, the problems that that we discuss every week become glaring when you really start analyzing stats and things like that. It really uh, is more glaring than than what you realize. So. So with that, we got Indianapolis. Uh, give me your prediction. Oh my! Yeah, you got me. So you got me scared now. I'm thinking. Oh my! It's gonna sound weird. It may be ten. Well, no, I think it's fourteen to twenty-one Steelers. Yeah, you know, I, I I'm with you. Uh, you know, I'm gonna. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with with pretty close to the same score from this past week. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say 27 27 nine. Okay. Uh, and and that's not really indicative of the Steelers playing well defensively and only giving up nine points. It's more indicative of the fact that uh, Indianapolis doesn't have doesn't have Andrew Luck. And that's true. If they had Andrew Luck, it, it's a whole different. It's a, it's a potentially it's a whole different thing. Yeah, I think Steelers is. offensively, uh, I think are going to continue and, and find that, you know, continue to get that groove and, and and again, you know, get that, you know, get get into that, you know, mid to to, to high twenties, uh, and I think you got to continue feeding the ball to Bell, but I, I think this is more indicative of. Indianapolis is not having luck. That that where I think you know when you can talk about a uh, you know a twenty-seven nine, you know a twenty-one fourteen kind okay. of game, mm-hmm. uh, and, and and feel confident with that. So uh, you know I, I think that's where we're at. Um, uh, you got anything exciting going on on uh, Thanksgiving tomorrow? Oh yes, we're going to do a little. Um, last couple of years, me and the family have been. You know, going out to a shelter and and letting our girls, you know, understand, you know, how to be thankful and helping other people who are not blessed, you know, to be able to cook at home and not to have the things, you know, like we do. And just let them know that, you know, there's always someone out there that needs someone help. And it could be right there in your backyard. So we've been doing that for the last uh, three to four years. And then they, they begin to understand, you know, thanking God for what we have and appreciate it. And after that, you know, we're coming back home, watch the game, and eat the rest of the turkey I don't eat today. You know, I've been picking at it, so hopefully yeah, you, it's you something you'll have. Yeah, I just had, I just had a, a little bit ago, I just had a little thank you Thanksgiving uh, here where I live with people with some with some turkey and some uh, mashed potatoes and 
mm. homemade giblet gravy, and I was mm, like, mm, you know, mm. if, 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 over the next few days, I can see 40 pounds <laughs> being gained in my future, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, oh. I was gonna make all this, all this, all this work doing all this boxing I've been doing to make it all worthless. Cause, now, know, how's that going? Man. Oh man, it it it's unbelievable. I, I I was joking around today. I was, you know Monday I did uh, ten rounds and uh, a lot of squats and squat jumps, and I did about ten rounds of uh, back work. And then what? yesterday I did about thirty uh, thirty minutes of. Uh, Footwork and some uh, shadow boxing, and today I contemplated how many steps it was going to take to get to the bathroom, and if I really had to go that way. <laughs> so that's where I'm at today. Whoa, you, you're doing good compared to last week. You was telling me uh, you're going to pick up a dive and hit the ground or something, drop on the floor. You like you get it later. <laughs> yeah, I, I still I tell you there there even today there's been a few times where I'm, I'm I have I have to seriously look and go there to it. Oh, that's good. That's um, you know, a little bit, of, a little bit ago before we started the show, I needed something to drink, and I, I sat here on the couch for about five <laughs> minutes, and I kept staring at the refrigerator, hoping that somehow somebody was going to walk in and get yeah. something to drink, so I didn't have to get up. But. He's like, somebody walk through that door any minute now. Any yeah, I get it. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> you know. So then, so then, you know, now here's the other thing, too, when you get up and, and, and you know, and then people that are listening to this are probably laughing right now quick because anybody that understands when you do a whole lot of squats and, you know, squat and doing all this stuff, they know how your legs feel 48 hours yeah. later. So, you know, you start really, when you get up to do something, you now start in your mind going, how many things do I need to do while I'm up like that? While well, I'm up, yes. So yes. you now start now start making a list, and it never <laughs> failed. That the minute you sit down, there was one thing you just did that you realized, yes. and you're like, well, you know, the, the house could be burning down right now, and I'm not moving. So <laughs> well, forget that. Oh, yeah. that's good. That's a good one. So mm. that's usually where where I'm at right now. But you mm. know, I'm uh, it, it, it's awesome. Uh, you know, it's something that I've always wanted to do, and. Uh, you know, it, it's definitely uh, it's definitely been enjoyable. So, uh, come back next Wednesday and we get to talk about this game, and we won't have oh, been yeah. knocked out. And uh, you know, gotten gotten a couple kidney punches. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we'll be coming back and we knock them out. Yeah. Yes. You know, can uh, have a good conversation. So, uh, you know, I hope you and your family have a great Thanksgiving. I wish you and yours, and you just enjoy, enjoy, and just relax. And everybody have a great Thanksgiving and uh, come back and join us next week and uh, take some time to, to listen to a lot of the other great shows we have. There's some awesome shows. I, I, I'm also involved in an NFL Pick'em show, and uh, uh, it gets interesting sometimes with all the characters we got on there. So uh, take some time and, and listen to some of the shows. But I uh, hope everybody has Thanksgiving. Thanks. Ah, you know, I'll restart that one. I hope everybody has a great Thanksgiving. And uh Come back and listen to us next week. Uh, Have a great week, everybody.